thousand animal species. <laughs> that is an animal species. Six thousand plants. Okay, so I said I would, you know, calm the content a bit down when it comes to reaction videos and that kind of stuff. But you guys were commenting that I should react to Geography Now. And I was like, what, which country is left that I still can do Geography Now on, which is relevant for my channel? And then you guys commented it was Slovenia. Completely forgot about my slow means. My brothers. So today we're going to be reacting to Geography Now, Slovenia. Video is quite long, so I don't want to, you know, chat around too long. Let's just get straight into it and uh, see what uh, what Barbie has to tell about, you know, Slovenia. A bit of a background story on that. Um, I have a lot of family living in Slovenia and a lot of friends in Slovenia. I am quite often in Slovenia when it comes, you know, to all the countries I travel through. I, I know a bit of about Slovenian culture and Slovenia in general, and I've been to many nice Slovenian places. That's about it. I don't know what the hell is going to talk about when it comes to history. Um, there's only a small part of the Slovenian history that I know. A time ago, one of you guys sent me this shirt. I made it into a gym shirt. And I'm actually a big deal in Slovenia, oh my god. And uh, I don't know, I guess, I guess I'm a big deal in Slovenia. Nah, but for real. Slovenia, our last and final Balkan country. There you go, last and final one, nice. Well, actually, the Thracian Peninsula that connects to- Oh my god, can you please just let me have this one f***ing moment? No. <laughs> this, that reaction right there, that's me in general when I read comments about the Balkans in my videos, but it's okay. For real, if there was ever a country that could fit nowhere yet everywhere all at once, it would probably be Slovenia. Welcome to the Switzerland of the Balkans. It's time to learn geography now! Alright, I'm gonna change this shirt. Oh, what's this? Yes, you can get a Geography Now shirt at geographynow.com. It's not Whoa. selling out if it's my merch. Anyway, hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Well, we've said this many times before, but if the Balkans were family, it would kind of be like... Oh, I Ooh, Jiggly. Jiggly. <laughs> Slovenia, come join us! Hey! Oh, oh, what? Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with this wine. Okay. Uh, wie auch immer. Uh, ich habe Düsseldorf besucht und... What the f***? Do German wanna be? German wanna you, I mean... You're... This is so true. Like, in general, um, there's many Slovenes and a lot of these Balkan countries or people from the Balkan countries you currently see on the screen, like Bosnia, Serbia, and Croatia, um, live in and working in Slovenia. But then a large part of Slovenians is like split up. Like one part really likes the Balkan side and the Balkan, you know, like these countries, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, their culture and their music and that kind of stuff. And then the other half is like really wanting to be western and modern and see themselves differently compared to the rest of of you know former yugoslavia but deep inside coming from a chefuri to my slovenian brothers yeah slovenia kind of has a whole other thing going on in the slavic world let's find it on the globe now shall we so Whoa, the music is so different. This is way more modern than the last episodes that I checked. Slovenia is one of the lesser known nations that doesn't get as much relative spotlight on the international stage. They definitely know how to hold their ground as a country and function efficiently though, mostly. I mean, there may be a few demarcation countries. <laughs> what? Brezo is a primetlik. Oh yeah. Whoa, holy shit. Yeah, I know this area actually. I drive through this area. Yeah, I forgot about that. Jeez. It's like a kind of a, a, a disputed thing with territory with Croatia and Slovenia due to the amount of ethnic Croatians living in it. It's, again, just the Balkan mess of nationalities and that kind of bullshit. You know, ethnic. Blah. Controversies, which will be explained in the motion graphic. For nice. one, Slovenia, which by the way looks like a screaming chicken, is located right at the crossroads of the Balkan Peninsula, South Europe, and Central Europe, bordered by four other countries, Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Croatia. In the west, they have a small 29 mile or 47 kilometer long coast with the Adriatic. It could have been longer if Italy hadn't totally swooped in and grabbed this town, Trieste, which Slovenia kind of claims used to be theirs a long time ago. Yep, and I've been to that town. Um, I actually, well, no, visited this entire beach area thing that's also near the place where the Swarovski wedding took place and all the Swarovski um, holiday things are built you know holiday houses it's like a holiday paradise but very very high-end and very expensive 
But that's another story. This also creates a weird triangle-shaped maritime dispute with Croatia on the Gulf of Piran. The issue was actually brought to the International Court of Justice in The Hague. And today, based on that Dernovšek Račan agreement, the boundaries look like this and give Slovenia a very small 16-kilometer-long, 2.5 nautical mile-wide corridor to the international waters known as the Junction Area. But that's not all. Along the border, Slovenia still claims the left bank of the St. Odoric Canal, built centuries ago, extending about 7 kilometers inland. This thin slice at the narrowest, only about about 24 meters wide, has crop fields with a few buildings, and even a casino that is de facto run by Croatia. But Slovenia is like, eh, come on, it's ours. In fact, much of the border confusion is just with Croatia, mostly along the historical river boundaries that shifted, so everything is a mess. You go to the end of the beak at the- That, that just goes for the entire Balkans. Everything is just a mess. <laughs> That's how you could, you know, summarize the Balkans. Everything is just a mess try point with Croatia and Hungary, you can clearly see the scrambled mess on the Mur and Big Kra rivers with narrowly attached amorphous blobs of land. Head south and you find the Brezovica pro Metliki dispute with arbitrarily drawn lines between them and Croatia, established around World War II. Anyway, the capital and largest city is Ljubljana, meaning the loved one, located in the central west part of the country. From there, the secondary subdivision of the country. One of the favorite cities, one of my favorite cities in, in Europe, I think is, I kid you not, 212 municipalities, 11 of which are classified as urban municipalities, meaning they have over 20,000 people and are economic and cultural centers of their regions. To make things a little easier though, the country is also divided into 12 statistical regions for the purpose of data collecting. These regions though have no official administrative function in themselves. Ljubljana of course has the largest and busiest airport, Joze Pucnik International, where most people fly into. Yay! From yep. there, only two other international airports exist, one in Maribor. the second largest city, Maribor, which can be found about 100 kilometers northeast and the third in Porto Rose on the coast of Porto Rose is very nice it's a very nice town or part of Slovenia which makes you feel it, it almost feels like you're in in like Los Angeles like palm trees are along the way uh, like the roads um very Italian slash Spanish-ish style of buildings it's, it's very nice of the Adriatic, whose IATA code is POW. Speaking of the coast, the largest and busiest seaport is located at Koper, where the yep, vast majority also of been cargo there. is transported. From there, an extensive network of roads connect every municipality, including the longest one, the A1 highway that starts on the coast and ends in Austria. And just like the highways, the country has a network of state-owned rail lines that more or less parallel the same roads and highways along them. Yeah, countries with borders on shifting riverbeds always end up in what I like to call the Balkan dilemma. Quick side note though, if you ask Slovenians how they might divide their country apart from you know 212 municipalities they might refer to the seven traditional regions people yes i i only know these ones i didn't know the 212 municipalities i only know like this this is the way i've you know I, I learned it through like Slovenian friends, Slovenian family, because they all only spoke about these regions. We'll still disagree on what actual boundaries are for these regions, but it kind of maybe more or less looks like this. Yeah. And each of them have their own stereotypes or regional culture. Dialects, way of talking in all those regions and um, uh, prejudicements about behavior from every region. Sure. If you are Slovenian, feel free to write down in the comments how you would describe each traditional region. I don't know, I heard like Primorska are like the talkative, temperamental people and like Styria is like the happy, drunk, Austrian-influenced people. I don't know. What do you think? Yep. In any case, when you come and look at Slovenia, you'll notice that within this small country, there's like a profusion of fusion. Nowhere else in the world can you really get a country that mixes all three of the largest ethno-linguistic people groups of Europe, the Slavs, the Germanic, and the Latin. Which brings us to the notable places section. Some of the top notable sites of Slovenia might include include Ljubljana Castle and the Dragon Bridge, the Autonomous Metalkova Art Center, the prehistoric pile dwellings of Ljubljana Moor, the wine regions, especially in Vipavo, the Honey Cookie Museum, the- I've been there so many times and nobody told me about a Honey Cookie Museum. <laughs> Insert sad music. Planica Ski Jump, the traditional herdsman huts of Velika Planina, and there are too many castles, 500 to 1,000 castles throughout the country, depending on what you consider a castle. There's even one in a cave, and there are over 2,500 historic churches. The most famous one, and the one you'll probably see on a lot Blade. of postcards, Lake Bled Island Church. It's the only natural island in the country, and tradition says that the groom has to carry the bride all the way up all 99 steps. Well, I just had hip surgery, babe, so change your plans. And it's all surrounded by beautiful waters and mountains. And speaking of landscape, it's time to move on to...
It's often said that Slovenia is the sunny side of the Alps. They have so much going on that even parts of the Chronicles of Narnia were filmed here. Lots of stuff to cover. So here we go. First of all, the country is located right in the transition zone between the Alps and the Dinaric Alps that extend into the Balkan Peninsula. The country is predominantly hilly or mountainous, with about 90% of the surface resting on at least 200 meters above sea level. At nearly 62%, it is also the third most forested country by percentage of land area in Europe after Finland and Sweden. From there, there are three main subsections of the Alps in the northern part of Slovenia, the Pohorje, the Kamnik Savinja, and the largest ones, the Julian Alps. In the Julians, you can find the tallest mountain, Tri Triglav, yeah, from the Yugoslav song, known for its majestic triple peaks as depicted on the coat of arms and just below nestled within these ridges is the largest natural lake, lake Bohi. Bohi. also just been there this, you'll find the longest river just above all this you'll find the longest river that flows through the country the Sava which flows southeast for about 615 miles ending in Croatia a branch of the Sava the Ljubljanica goes through the capital and it's a very important river from there you have the smaller highlands like the Nanos and Dineric mountains in the southwest the Sava and Slovenia hills in the center and east, which lead to the flattest part of the country, the Pannonian Basin in the far east. As a country sitting not far from some major fault lines like the Dineric Alps, the country has a few tectonic fissures like the Rasha and Divacha fault lines. These fault lines are partially responsible for making the entire western part of Slovenia a karst zone. The word even originated from Slovenia, meaning a landscape underlain by eroded and dissolved limestone, creating landforms like ridges, towers, sinkholes, and caves. In fact, there are over 10,000 registered caves, and many new ones are discovered annually. The longest Whoa, I didn't know that. I've never been to a Slovenian cave. Something I, I think I should look into because it would be great content if I visit Slovenia to go into some cave. One system in the country being the Migovets in the northwest, also part of the Triglav National Park, with about 42,000 meters of tunnel explored. The second longest one, though, Postojna, is way more popular and commercialized. As wow. It was the first cave system to have electric lighting in the world in 1884, and even a train system built for tourists back in 1872. Yeah, no joke. Whether it's the green surface of the Logarska Dolina Glacial Valley or the green underground river labyrinths of Postojna, Slovenia is landscape is absolutely speckled with picturesque sights. I'm more of a Blaisky Vinkar type of guy, but yeah, sure. Oh, and whoa, that also looks really good. Wow, why haven't I never like went to these more popular places in Slovenia? I don't know why. Now that I see this, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, disappointed in myself for not going there, but everything is fixable. I forgot to mention, all these fault lines are also factors that create the copious amounts of thermal springs in the south and yeah, eastern I do know of the country. That. The largest ones being the Chatej, Chatej Thermal Spa near Croatia. I think I got that. I don't know. So you get the mountain experience, the alpine experience, the cave experience, and even a few coastal beaches and thermal spas. Woohoo! It's like a quintuple package deal. Granted, they do have a lot of overcast skies and rainy days year-round, but that's besides the point. Pretty good deal. And speaking of good deals, usually Noah comes in to finish off this segment, but he's visiting family during the season. So Aww. let's see. As a Slavic nation, why don't we have our favorite resident Slav, Ivan, come in to fill in for this time. Drava, drava, drava. I'm here, baby. How you doing? You I have. actually didn't even leave, to be honest. I'm ready. If you look at the way Slovenia operates, they have quite a success story when it comes to managing the relationship between environment and economy. In fact, the EU anointed Slovenia's capital as the greenest capital in Europe after achieving 96 out of 100 detailed sustainability indicators. Wow. They have become one of the fastest developing nations in Europe. And in I do know that. And that's one of the reasons I really like the country. Enjoy a high level of prosperity and stability in contrast to other countries. Even though they only made about 11% of the population of Yugoslavia, they accounted for about a fifth of the GDP and a third of the exports. I mean, right? So yeah. when they wanted the independence, it was like, are you sure you want to go out on your own? I mean, it's a scary world out there. Yeah, dad, I, uh, I think I got it covered. Slovenia has been a mini powerhouse in electronics and equipment production. Some domestic brands like these produce everything from light aircrafts to motorcycle exhaust pipes and refrigerators. <laughs> in fact, Slovenia supposedly has the most tractors per capita in the world. Weird fact, but the fact. What? Most tractors per capita? Why haven't I seen a single one of them? Yeah, I did. A couple of them in all the years that I've been there. Maybe I have the wrong places, but yeah, I'm mostly in Ljubljana, so you don't, you know, see tractors driving around city center, I guess. Nonetheless, in addition, they are huge on wine. It is said that there is a vineyard for every 70 people in the country, and they have the world's oldest vine still producing fruit at around 440 Whoa. years old. And keep in mind that one vine survived centuries of wars, battles, bombings, and a lot of blowing shit up. Someone give that vine a- And a lot of blowing shit up. Well, I mean, 
the Yugoslav war or, you know, the independence of Slovenia took like three days of, you know, combat. That's about it. I think it's three days. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm not sure and entirely sure anymore. Medal of Honor or something. I don't know. Just keep going. Anyways, one other national pastime, beekeeping. That's right. Specifically yep. with the native Carniolan honeybee. It is said there is about one beekeeper per 200 people in the country. Honey shops selling honey all over the place and honey flavored foods are everywhere in Slovenia. Yep. Honey, honey, honey is their thing. Don't try and take it. And speaking of bees and insects, here's Gary Harlow. Gary Harlow here. As a heavily forested country, it's no surprise that Slovenia has incredible- I, I just, this guy is the best act from this entire show. I just cracks me up every time. This guy's a legend. Incredible biodiversity. There's over 15,000 animal species. <laughs> that is an animal species. 6,000 plants and 5,000 fungi. One of which is currently on my foot. And about 10% of Slovenia is protected national park. The largest one being the Triglav National Park in the northwest part of the country. You can find some of the 75 mammal species here like European beavers, grey wolves and European otters. Do an otter sound. Otter! Otter! <laughs> <laughs> Do an otter sound. Yes, that is exactly. <laughs> it sounds like on us. Okay. Slovenia actually has one of the highest concentration of brand bears per capita in the world. And one of the most famous horse breeds, the Lipizan, is from here. Originated from the oldest European stud farm. Because they're studs. And of course, every Slovenian will tell you to try and find a baby dragon. At least that's what the locals call orms. Blind. A baby dragon? It looks like uh, some weird. F I don't know. I'm not gonna go into that. It looks like some, you know, fetus that just crawled out of something. Aquatic salamanders that thrive in the dark, wet cave systems. That's it for me. And it's done for. <laughs> that was that. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, I love the way these guys are presenting this entire show. It's really awesome. This was part one. If you if you want to see part two of the reaction video, I'll have it up soon, like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Hope you guys like it so far. If you did, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel to see part two, of course. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao. Perfect.